This is a test launch of an Iranian rocket. Iran has said the rocket would be used to carry satellites into space, but some Western countries have said that Iran could potentially use rockets like this to carry a nuclear device. We are looking uh, to, uh, to prevent Iran from acquiring a nuclear weapon. As Iran reached new milestones in uranium enrichment and limited access to inspectors in 2021, questions have intensified over what is actually happening at some nuclear facilities where it handles uranium and plutonium, the key ingredients for a nuclear bomb. These gaps in monitoring will start to raise questions about Iran's intentions. Iran has repeatedly denied that it is making a bomb and said sites like these produce energy, medical equipment and scientific research. <laughs> but nuclear experts say this hardware can potentially be used to produce weapons and note the country has been using its nuclear capabilities as leverage with the international community. Almost all of the technologies have a civilian nuclear energy component, but the, they also have a nuclear weapons component. So what do we actually know about Iran's nuclear infrastructure and how it might be used to make nuclear weapons? Iran has been building its nuclear program for half a century. In the 1960s and 1970s, when Iran was ruled by the Shah, uh, there was an initial interest in nuclear technology spurred on by the United States. And actually, some of Iran's oldest nuclear facilities were built in that period. Jeffrey Lewis teaches classes on arms control and is a non-proliferation advocate. After the Shah fell, all of that cooperation was cut off, and Iran had a kind of fitful relationship trying to revive that nuclear program on and off through the 1980s and 1990s uh, until we entered the early 2000s when Iran made a very significant commitment to a nuclear program. In the early 2000s, satellite imagery began to reveal sites like Natanz, where Iran says it enriches uranium for its nuclear power plants. Natanz is a complex where Iran conducts most of its uranium enrichment activities. Kelsey Davenport is an analyst at a non-partisan organization that promotes arms control. This facility is quite large. It's big enough to house about 100,000 centrifuges. Centrifuges are devices that spin uranium oxide to extract the useful isotopes. In other words, you want to remove the vast majority of uranium that is useless uh, from a nuclear reaction perspective uh, and really just leave a condensed quantity of the good stuff. As part of a 2015 nuclear agreement, Tehran had agreed to allow inspectors to monitor its nuclear facilities, limit the quantity of its uranium to 300 kilograms, and limit enrichment to a key level of no more than 3.67%. But after the United States withdrew from the deal and reimposed sanctions in 2018, Iran began breaching that limit. This year, Iran announced it would limit inspections to sites like Natanz, where it's been enriching uranium to 4.5%. At 5%, you have reactor fuel. At 20%, you have scary reactor fuel. And at 90%, you have the material for a bomb. And in February of this year, Tehran said it could dramatically increase its levels of enrichment. If you enrich to say 5%, it sounds like you haven't gone very far of the way to 90% for a bomb. But to go from 0 to 5% is basically half the work that it will take to go to 90%. So if you have an enrichment capability, you really are going to have the capacity to enrich to the levels that would be needed for a nuclear weapon. And there's one site where Iran has already taken that enrichment a step further. Fordo. It was constructed in secret and only discovered by intelligence agencies in 2009. Fordo is much smaller much more consistent with the size of a nuclear weapons facility and its enrichment halls are placed under a mountain where they would be extremely difficult to attack. And so when Fordo was revealed, I think most of us looked at the characteristics of that facility and thought that really looks more like something that you would build if you wanted a weapon than it does if you were planning to make fuel for a power plant. Iran halted production at Fordo under the 2015 nuclear deal. But in 2021, it said it resumed uranium enrichment to 20%. It says it's enriching to this level for one of its research reactors in Tehran, and that the facility is underground due to a risk of US or Israeli attack. 
All of these factors suggest that the Fordow facility was likely being designed to produce fissile material for a weapons program if Iran made the decision to pursue the bomb. Another key step in manufacturing a weapon is the ability to convert enriched uranium into a metal. And at Esfahan, Iran has a uranium metal facility. And this is quite concerning because uranium metal is another of these dual use areas. You know, Iran claims that it's pursuing this technology to produce uranium metal fuel for its research reactor. So far, inspectors say Iran has only constructed 3.6 grams of uranium metal, far less than the tens of kilos needed for a bomb and at a purity below weapons grade, but still in breach of the 2015 nuclear agreement, which prohibited the production of the metal altogether. I would say the facility as a whole is fundamentally civilian. The act of making uranium metal is one of those 50-50, I would prefer you not do it kind of things. Iran has several other facilities, including Iraq, where it could potentially produce plutonium. In early 2021, analysts estimated it could have taken Iran between nine months and two years to build a nuclear device, but some analysts say limiting inspections may shorten that time frame. I don't think we're going to see Iran you know, dash for a bomb anytime soon. But in this limbo, I think Iran will certainly seek to preserve the nuclear technologies and materials necessary to pursue a bomb down the road if it chooses to do so. Iran has issued a number of statements that have been interpreted as a threat by Western countries. Analysts say Iran's rhetoric, breaches of the 2015 nuclear deal and rocket launchers may actually be aimed at one main goal, to be at the top of the US president's agenda and negotiate the lifting of sanctions as international pressure and the pandemic have thrown the country into a deep economic crisis. It's been very transparent and upfront about what measures it intends to violate. And it has informed the International Atomic Energy Agency of those violations in advance so that they can be monitored. And that tells us that these measures are about leverage and about creating pressure and are not indicative of a dash towards nuclear weapons.